again to Abundant Life Fellowship is Liberty. I'm Pastor Corey. If you're ever here, come and visit us. Now, I want to say something to you who is who are a Christian or you are a Christ follower. God did not choose you to go to heaven. God did not choose you to go to heaven. That is an incomplete thought. God chose you so that before you go to heaven, before you go to heaven, your life would have an impact. That your life would make an impact here on earth. That you would be uh, growing in fruitfulness, fruitfulness. So on that day when you die and you go to heaven, guess what? You're going to have something to show forth for your life. Fruit. Because Jesus said this, you didn't, I didn't choose, you didn't choose me, but I chose you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. He also said, by this the Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. All righty. So this is our theme of the year of 2023, that God wants you to be a good and fruitful tree. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. be a good and fruitful tree in 2023. Because we are all trees. Jesus said that. Some bear good fruit, some uh, not so good fruit. So we want to be good and fruitful trees. And so today uh, I want to uh, follow up on what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago or so. We were talking about the fruit of our lips. Every day we are speaking to God. You know, there's a joke amongst men, all right? Maybe I shouldn't tell this joke since there are ladies here. But since I started it, I'll go ahead and finish it. But the joke amongst men is, you know the reason why women normally live longer than men? Because they need more time to finish talking about what they started talking about. <laughs> now, some people say... Um, that the average human will speak between 10 and 20,000 words a day. Some say, well, women need twice that. You know, some say not so. But every day we are speaking thousands and thousands and thousands of words. In other words, every day words are coming out of our lips. And what I want to say today is those words are like seeds. Now, before me, um, as you can see, I have some fruit here. Uh, one of my favorite fruit is a papaya, okay? And guess what? You can't see it probably from back there, but that's a papaya seed right there. And out of that seed can come papaya trees and more papayas. Out of that little seed. And our words are like seeds. They may not seem like much, but or right, they, can, they can carry a powerful punch, either in the, the words of Mark Johnson's favorite verse, What's it say, Mark? Uh, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So God has, has, has created us in such a way that our words are meant uh, to bring forth good in the world, but also they can also uh, bring not good, or they can bring evil. And so um, in Proverbs, as we just mentioned there, the tongue has the power of life and death. Now in verse 20, it says, from the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled, and with the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. So our lips are sowing seeds every day. Now obviously here, I have a, uh, I have a, uh, a cantaloupe here that I just opened up, all right? And the cantaloupe has a bunch of seeds in it, all right? And if we plant these seeds, all right, guess what? Eventually, cantaloupes are going to come out. And the same way with us, uh, something will bear fruit according to its seed. Now, if I plant this uh, tangerine seeds in the ground, guess what? I'm not going to get an avocado. Or if I plant the avocado, I'm not going to get a pear. Or I'm not going to get a kiwi. Do you want to add to that? In Jamaica, they say... You can't plant yams and reap potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the thing is, um, speaking of death and life, we have we have the ability to speak seeds, to speak words every day that can bring forth good words. But on the other hand, we have weeds up here. 
you know. And so our words can also be like weeds that we can bring forth uh, more weeds and not not good fruit. Now, think about it. Every day you're speaking at least ten thousand words. Now, some of those words are just check it out on the internet. All right, it's from seven to twenty thousand. I did some research on it. Uh, maybe some of you who are so wise that you only speak maybe 10 words, or maybe if you're so wise that when you text, yeah. it's a bonanza if you text three words back. <laughs> <laughs> some of you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the words we speak, some of them maybe about the weather or this or that, but some words um, are, for example, uh, one time we had a worker in our, in our house, and uh, he was, um, nobody here, relax, okay? <laughs> And so um, early on, he, I heard him say, I Dios mío, I Dios mío. Not as a blessing, okay, but as a complaint. And all through the day, he was complaining about this, complaining about this, you know, and it's just like he had a, 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 a thundercloud over his head, you know. And to make a long story short, at the end of the day, we parted ways, all right? Because I didn't want, and actually later in the day, I said with Carmen, Carmen, we need to clear the atmosphere because you've just been cursing and murmuring and complaining in our household the whole day. And we just had to clear the air because our words are like seeds and they can germinate. And so obviously we want to be planting uh, the right seeds. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. your words are seeds. Make them good ones. Again, to another neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. your words are seeds. Make them good ones. Good ones. All righty. Now, there's an, I, I love where Scripture um, comments on Scripture. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and in and, and, and Psalm 16, uh, he says, I set the Lord always before me. Listen, this is the best way to live. Always keep the Lord always before you. That is the best way to live. In every situation, Lord, I want you there in the first place. You in place of preeminence. And then he goes on there and he says, Because the Lord is in my right hand, I will not be moved. Listen, some of you, some of us sometimes, we get we get flaky. We go here, we go there, we get inconsistent. And the reason that happens is we take our eyes off the Lord. But we keep our eyes on the Lord. Guess what? We'll be able to be water walkers. We won't sink and yeah. all that. Thankfully, when we sink and say, Lord, have mercy. He's there to pick us up. But God's perfect will is not fall, get up, fall, get up, fall, get up. Now, he wants us to learn how to stand and walk yeah. and rooted, rooted in God. So he goes on to say, um, therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My glory rejoices. What does he mean by that? My glory rejoices. Well, wonderfully, on the day of Pentecost, Peter is, is uh, quoting some scriptures, and one of the scriptures he quotes is Psalm 16. And in Acts chapter 2, this is, I, he, he's quoting that, that scripture, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He's at my right hand that I may not be shaken or moved. Therefore, my heart rejoices and my tongue was glad. So you see, in Psalms, it says, my, 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 uh, my glory is glad, my glory rejoices. Here it says, my tongue is glad. Listen, your tongue is part of your glory. You are created in the image of God. It's a wonderful thing. So part of your glory, our glory, is our tongue. I mean, there's no other, well, I was going to say, maybe bees can compete a little bit because, I mean, a bees amaze me. But anyway, you know, that a bee can go back to the hive and see. And, you know, another bee will know exactly two miles away where to go. I mean, talk about the majesty, the wonder of God. But you and I, for example, if I told you there was a $100 bill behind the third tree in the parking lot to the right, you would know exactly where to go. Why? Because my tongue is speaking something, you know. And so with our, our tongue is our glory. Listen, a good thing to do every day, Romans 12 Lord, I offer myself as a living sacrifice. It's a good thing to offer your lips, your tongues, your body every day as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So uh, your tongue is your glory. So we want to use our glory correctly. Now in Ephesians, it says, let no corrupt, all right? Let no weeds, all right? 
You know, it's amazing. You look at these weeds, and even there you see the majesty of God, because every one of these little things here, there's hundreds of seeds there. Hundreds of seeds. It's amazing how God does his thing in nature. But anyway, Ephesians, let no corrupt communication. That word communication uh, in, in Greek is the word logos. Simply means words. Let no corrupt words, let no corrupt words come out of your mouth, all right? And, but only that which is good for the use of edification that it may minister to grace to others. In Greek, the word is sapros. Say sapros. Sapros. Now you know some Greek, okay? And it simply means rotten. Have you ever been around somewhere where maybe some wheat, not wheat, but meat, is starting to get rancid? You know, it stinks. You know, uh, you know um, let me boast on somebody here who's not here. You know, it's good to talk about people behind their back, all right, if you're talking good things, okay? But John's friend, Teddy, uh, when we were in our apartment building, one guy was, uh, uh, coming in or whatever, but the electricity had gone off and we didn't know. And there was a refrigerator that had meat in it and the electricity was off for maybe a week or two weeks. Okay, it was just nasty, all right? And this this friend of John's, okay, uh, maybe it's because she's from Tennessee, you know, but she's a good country girl. She just threw herself into that. You know, she got, she threw that stuff out of the bags and it was just, oh, stinky and all that and got the Clorox and cleaned it all out and everything. Talk about a serving spirit. I mean, just, I mean, I, she got three or four points. Not she's up on that one. Wow. You know, but the point is this, is that that meat was just rotten. It was rancid. It was and Paul is saying here, let none of those type of words come out of your mouth. You know, words that is stink. You know, I, I love it in John 13. Uh, Jesus said something to the disciples, and he said, you say well. He said, you call me teacher and Lord. You say well. And he switched it up a little bit. He says, if I then your Lord and teacher. But we want to be able to have the Lord hearing our words and him saying, you're saying well. You're speaking well. You're speaking well. You're, you're putting out good seeds. Good seeds, good seeds. It's every day we're putting out seeds, good seeds. You know, and so the thing here is, as it says in Ephesians, but speak words that are edifying. And the word is okadomeo in Greek, which means build others up. Build others up. So if you and I are going to bear fruit in 2023 and good, be good trees, we're going to be talking good about others. We're not going to be backbiting. We're not going to be fault-finding. We're not going to be, and you know, sadly, not a lot, but sadly, my Christian experience uh, of over 50 years now, sometimes people use prayer to gossip about other people. It's a sad thing. They say, well, Lord, you know how he's struggling with his pornography or whatever it is. And people go, what? You know, I mean, that, that's just doing the, the devil's work. You understand? You know? We don't want to do the devil's work, okay? You, you want to, you understand. You can pray for somebody. Lord, and, 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 and Jerry struggles, or we all have struggles. Lord, help me. That type of thing. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but we want to speak words that edify. And we're not only talking about, listen to this, not only words to others, words to ourselves. Yes. Okay, not just to others, but words to ourselves. Very important. You know, we need encouragement. I, when we were, I'm not, when, I'm, I'm not, blah, 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 blah. when I was on my way to uh, Cincinnati, I'm in the airport, I'm crossing somebody, and I'm just sort of there, and the Lord says, tell her how special she is to me. So a stranger, you know, I said, I said well, you tell her. So I just I said, ma'am, I think God wants me to let you know that you are so special to me. She's like, oh, thank you. You know, never saw her again in my life. You understand? But God wants you and I to be putting forth seeds of life, words of life, words of life. Proverbs, it's not in your notes, Proverbs 10, 11. The mouth of a righteous person is a well of life, is a well of life, is a well of life. When you speak those words to others, you also speak them to yourself. You know, sometimes we, we stumble and this and that, and maybe, you know, the voices of the enemy come, well, I'm a failure, I'm never going to get through this, da, da. Yeah, don't, don't voice those to anybody, but on the other hand, you say, well, 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 God says, God says that God is with us, God is with me, God is for me, 
uh, one of John's verses, mine too, Psalm 118, verse 17. I will not die, but I will live, and I will declare the works and goodness of God. Very important. That every day we're speaking words. Let me give you just a few quick examples. All right? Um, number one there, a contrast of the seas. Okay? In, um, in, um, okay, in Matthew 8, Matthew 8, the uh, Jesus delivers somebody, and part of the story there was 2,000 pigs went over the cliff and everything, and all the people of the town came out, and with their words they said, please go, please go. On the other hand, in John chapter 4, the Samaritans, and the Jews aren't supposed to hang out with the Samaritans, but they saw who he was, and they said, they stay. urged him to the Lord, please stay. Mm -hmm. So he stayed there for a couple more days. I tell you, a good thing to do, good words. Don't say to God, ah, no, don't touch that area of my life. No, Lord, every area of my life, I need you. I need you. Every room, every nook, nook, cranny, thought, every area, please come, Jesus, and be Lord of my life. Reign in me, Lord. Have your way in me. You see, these are good words to, to, to talk to God. They really are. Now, has anybody here absolutely arrived in your Christian life? <laughs> you have probably arrived at the conclusion that you need help. Okay. Yeah, we all need help. Turn to your neighbor and say, David, you need help. Now turn to the pastor and say, Pastor, you really need help. I do. We do. All right. Okay, contrast num the okay from numbers. Okay, uh, the spies going to the promised land, and what was the seed coming out of their mouth that they poisoned a whole population, twenty and up? It says, "No, we, we can't go in there. We're like grasshoppers. We can't do it. We can't do it." Hey, they're poisoning a whole population of Jews, and the. the, the, the entered their ears and sent her, yet it go to the promised land because of those words of doubt, unbelief, went into those ears. Thankfully, uh, Joshua and Caleb said, whoa, no, we can go into the land. You see, the, the power of words, the power of words. You know, and I know we've talked about this before, but I just, you know, God wants you to be very fruitful this year. And a big part of that is putting out the right seeds of our mouth, the right seeds. So we can go through something, and maybe maybe there's something you've struggled with, you haven't been able to break through and get the victory. You need to hang in there and say, Lord, God, you are with me. And Lord, by you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, you are with me. By God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You put the word of God into your mouth. You make declarations. Okay. Important. All right. Uh, number three. All right. Two guys are blind. And they're saying, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy. And the crowd is saying, shut up. Gaiete. Gaiete. Shut up. You know? And you know, this happens sometimes. When we start seeking God, when we start going after God, you know, other people will say, dial down. You know, you don't want to get too radical or too emotional or whatever. Or the, the, the culture or the whatever will say, well, just be... Yeah, don't, don't stir the no, no, no. But these, these guys, you know what the, the scripture says? Okay, the voices were saying, shut up. And the, and the scripture says, all the more. Jesus! 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 Guess whose attention they got? Jesus! All right? And uh, it's sort of comical because, you know, these are two blind men. And Jesus, what do you guys want? <laughs> Yeah. But, can you, can you listen, it had to come out of the mouth. Yeah, you know, it had to come out of the mouth. So, for example, I mean, I will not give you all the details, but I've been delivered of a lot of things over the last 50 years, okay? And so mm -hmm. lots of times I said, Lord, I need to be delivered from this, from this, from this. Way. You speak it out. You know, you get real with God. Mm -hmm. God is not looking for real, uh, for, for ideal Christians. He's looking for real Christians. You know, that's important. You know, we don't want to be a church that sort of, we sort of look good, but, you know, there's some stuff. No, we want to be real with God and with one another. All right. All right. So, let's see. Next one. Um, number four. Okay. Uh, what's the, uh, ah, okay. Some voices say, the fool says in his heart, there's no God. 
Okay, the fool says, no God, you don't need to call upon God. See, these are, these are seeds. Uh, it comes to my mind right now, this is, it's a sad, sad, sad story. I read it on uh, the news, a young, a young white guy, maybe about a year or so ago, uh, he had been hearing words of hatred towards black people. This is, in, I think, in New York. So he got his gun and he went in a shopping center where black folks killed nine of them, nine. And as you, and, and as I'm reading the story and everything, he, he he said, "Well, I was just listening and reading about all these words of hate for people of color." And you see, words can, can be can be deadly, you know. And this is why we really we need to set the example, okay, of speaking life, you know. But also, when we see stuff like that happen, we can also uh, that happening in society. Uh, and we, we curse that stuff. We bind that hatred. We That's bind right. it in Jesus' name. And that light, that, life, that yes. love be released. Yes. That's right. Mm, mm, mm. So, um, so anyway, uh, so one voice says, uh, there's no God. Uh, just curse God. Uh, anyway, no God. The other one says, Jeremiah 33. It says, call on me, and I'll answer you. Hallelujah. You want to leave an eternal living? legacy for your life even after you're gone lift up big prayers to God big God big prayers you know God move and we've been talking earlier about the, the, what God's doing in the youth in the world just start putting your prayers into that God God millions of young people I'm on fire for you God you know, I'm a result of that. 1971, the last thing I was looking for was Jesus. I was looking for other things, okay, that I will not mention here, all right? But God snatched me out of that, and here I am, the result of somebody's prayers. So keep lifting up your prayers, calling out to God. God, do a powerful thing in our youth, okay? Now, you can be a person in your, with your mouth. You can say things like Job's wife said, curse God and die. Yeah, drop dead, you know. And actually, with what he went through, uh, probably, probably part of his flesh felt like could like feel like doing that. I'm sure the devil was whispering to that. You know, sometimes God uses or no, the devil uses humans to speak demonic words. Let us be the sanctified, consecrated vessels of God that God uses our mouth to speak words of life, Hallelujah. words yes. of faith, yes. Yes. words of, of breakthrough, you know? Yes. And so once again, we're just, we're saying that uh, the words that we speak have power in them. And so I just want to challenge you, challenge me uh, to speak words of life, words of faith uh, to others, but also to ourselves. Yes. Very, yes. very, very, very important, yes. you know? and. Uh, uh, words can change the, the atmosphere uh, of our of our lives uh, in a big big way, um, and it, and the words can change the atmosphere of a home. Words can change the atmosphere of a church. Change the atmosphere. Just like earlier when somebody, uh, uh, yeah. And sometimes I forget what your given name is. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's Cynthia. 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 Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah Cynthia. But, you know, She's symphony because she has a song in her heart. But you know, she had some words of encouragement for Dr. Enrique, and then another word of encouragement came and came. And see that that I would say the atmosphere even lifted up, even got brighter after that. You know, so God wants us to be those who will, will bright up and wherever your workplace is or your neighborhood is, speak life. You know, let people know that God God loves them, cares for them. You know, that type of thing. And so um, there's a great, great, great prayer at the end of Psalm 19. A one sentence prayer. Let the words of my mouth, repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My strength and my redeemer. That is a great prayer to have in your vocabulary. It really is. So, so uh, let's see here. Uh, once again, tell your neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Your words are seeds. Your words are seeds. Make them good ones. Make them good ones. And so those of you listening in from wherever you are in the world, we bless you in the name of the Lord. If you ever come to Puerto Rico, come visit us at Abundant Life uh, or AbundantLifeByTheSea.com. Uh, we love you guys. We bless you in the name of the Lord.